Alpha Phi Alpha Sphinx Talk with Brother Eric Christopher Webb is sponsored by Good Health Wins. For more content, subscribe now. Hi, welcome to Sphinx Talk. I'm your host, Brother Eric Christopher Webb, and today I am here with the 24th Southwestern Regional Vice President, Brother Jermaine O. Netherly. Brother Netherly, it's great to have you here. Hey, good morning, Brother Webb. How are you doing? I'm, I'm wonderful. We're, we're here live at the 78th Southwestern Regional Convention, uh, and, and, and your theme, your theme for your convention, Brother Netherly. Breaking Barriers and Empowering Change. Breaking Barriers and Empowering Change. So, uh, Brother Netherly has laid out uh, a, a, a great agenda. The public program was, was very interesting and engaging, dealing with mental health. So, that was a powerful topic. Uh, Thank you. So, for our audience out there, um, our, you know, with Sphinx Talk, usually we do deal with a lot of different celebrity okay. alphas, and so <clears throat> we don't deal with... Uh, the leadership in Alpha Phi Alpha a lot of times. Okay. So uh, a lot of folks don't know out there what a, a regional vice president does and and what encompasses our southwestern regional. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Happy to do so. So the, a regional vice president they represent the five regions of the fraternity. So for me, it's the southwestern region. I have the states of Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Texas. As a vice president, I'm responsible for the chapters in those four districts but also uh, I'm a, a general board member. And so when uh, the general session, general convention is not in session, then the decisions of the fraternity are made by the board. And so I'm, as a general officer of the fraternity, I represent the brothers in the Southwestern region and their interests for all the decisions that are made for the fraternity. And that's great, so and, and how long is your term? So it's a two-year term, and so most of us, you can be elected to, you can do two consecutive two-year terms. So I'm on my second, uh, two-year term. I've got another year and about four months left. So how, how has that been? How it's been good. It's been good. I think the first two years were more just learning and getting comfortable in the role, getting comfortable being a board of directors member and understanding what those issues are and thinking on a higher level for the fraternity than what I would have done at the area or, or a chapter level. So, so what's that commitment look like as a regional vice president? I mean, you know, this is a, a volunteer position. It's a volunteer Very leadership true. position. Uh, uh, how demanding is that? Well, it all depends. So the good thing is brothers understand that it's a voluntary position. Uh, all of us still have regular jobs, and so the chapters and brothers are, are very flexible with that. But it all depends. It depends on the issues, the things that are going on. Of course, it's during convention time. It takes a lot more of your time uh, if you're having issues. Uh, it, with some of your chapters within your region, that's going to take a little bit more of your attention. But at the same time, it's not always bad things. It's a lot of good things. We love our fraternity. So visiting with chapters, uh, helping them celebrate milestones, helping brothers celebrate milestones, it doesn't seem like work because this is the fraternity that we love. Wow. So, so what's, what's, been your journey, what's, your journey, what's been your journey? So how did you come into the fraternity? Okay. Did you, you <clears throat> join undergrad or alumni? How did, you, how did you come into the fraternity? What's been your journey? I came through uh, one of my college chapters. I was initiated in the fall of 1995 at the ADMU chapter from the University of Houston. Uh, from there, graduated December 96. January 97, I joined Alpha Eta Lambda, which is the alumni chapter in Houston, Texas. Uh, had a small stint in Alpha Delta Lambda uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Came back to Houston. Um, was my uh, undergraduate, was a director of education, yeah. became president of Ada Mu right before I graduated, okay. joined Alpha Eta Lambda and kind of hit the ground running uh, over several committees, eventually becoming the president of Alpha Eta Lambda. Uh, with that was also an area director, so responsible for the, the, the chapters in the greater Houston area, mm -hmm. uh, kind of led from area director to had an interest in membership intake uh, and became an IMDP lead for the Southwestern region before becoming a uh, Regional Vice and, President. And, and for, the, for the people out there, IMDP, that's our? IMDP is our initial membership development process. It's our process uh, where we bring in non-members and we take them through the process to make them members. Right, right, right. 
So you, you, you talked about your 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 role your 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 role as a officer and a leader in Alpha. You know, what when we talk about that commitment, what, what's it, how many how many hours a day? If I had to average hours a day, probably about maybe two one or two hours a day, if I'm yeah. going to average it. Uh, so, of course, we are required to have four board meetings mm -hmm. uh, in person or virtual uh, each year. Mm -hmm. If there are other issues that require additional meetings, we'll, we'll do that. But generally, just a little bit each day can make it happen. Or, of course, during convention season like we are now, I've got a block of three or four days. So if I'd average it, maybe an hour, hour and a half a day. Okay. It's not that lying. bad. I think you're giving more time <laughs> than that. So, so what do you what do you do in your in your professional life? What do you do in your professional life? So, professionally, I am a director, uh, tax director at KPMG. So, KPMG, one of the big four accounting firms. Uh, in my role, I'm responsible for systems that help our clients know what to rep report and withhold for our global equity compensation. Well, that seems like you're really busy with that. So. How do you balance that? How do you get your time off? How does that work? Or are you just taking vacation hours to do this role as the regional vice president? Or what, what are you doing? How, how does this work? You're right. It, it does take a little more time than a property. Now, now that I think about it. So, hey, 8 to 5, 8 to 6, it's all KPMG. It's all work. Right. My afternoons is generally dedicated to Alpha. Uh, and so, like days like today, I, I do take personal time off because our conventions are during the day. And so you just plan for it. And so luckily, I'm very fortunate to be at a level in the firm where I can manage my team's work. Okay. And then when I'm not available, I can make sure that I have you know, managers to take care of those things. And then of course, if something pops up that they need okay. at, at my level, they can reach out to me. Uh, but the good thing too is Alpha is also very flexible. So if I need to step out of a meeting for a convention, I can do that, take care of that because brothers understand um, KPMG is my livelihood. Right, right. So, so this convention, uh, so let's talk about, the, let's talk about your 78th uh, regional convention, anniversary convention. Um, your theme, again, was one more time. Breaking barriers and empowering change. So how did, how did you arrive at that theme? <clears throat> well, coming into New Orleans, uh, I guess the current environment, uh, if you think about politically what, what uh, people that look like ourselves mm -hmm. are, are facing, what I wanted to do in coming to New Orleans is one, of course, have the brothers gather uh, to handle the business of Alpha, but I wanted them to leave empowered, one, by talking about some of the issues that, especially as black men that we're facing, and then giving them tools to deal with that, but also giving them some encouragement. So once they leave New Orleans and they're back in their respective chapters, they have been recharged, they've got some additional information and to help do the programs that Alpha has and to help make their communities better. And so what I wanted for this convention was to empower those brothers, mm -hmm. give them tools that they need, and then charge them up so they can go make the change in their communities. So the, the public program on Thursday dealt with mental health. And, and <coughs> we all know that mental health, especially among black men, is a, a major problem, major issue that, that usually goes unchecked due to stigma and a lot of other things. How, how did you... Um, Pulled that together. Why did you think that public program was necessary at this time? Again, the things that we're currently facing, um, the political environment, the fact that black history is under attack, DEI is under attack, um, educating our kids and and having the truth be told. You know, there, there, there are forces that want to make take things like slavery and take them out of our, our, of our educational system. And so as black men, we, we bear the brunt of that, mm -hmm. and many times we don't talk about it. Right. Uh, it's sometimes not seen as manly to say, hey, I'm having a hard day. Sometimes it's not seen uh, as manly to, to say, I just need to go somewhere and decompress. Right. And it hasn't been popular in our community to go seek professional help. Right. And so why not, if we're coming to New Orleans, uh, have a public program so they can see other people that look like them and have an open discussion in a safe space that one, acknowledging this is some heavy stuff we're dealing with. Just as men going to work, raising a family, being in the community, and then dealing with all the, the external pressures, it's tough. And it's okay to say it's tough. And I'm no less of a man to say it's tough, or, if, or even if I need to cry about it, or talk to someone else about it, or seek professional help. I wanted brothers to leave here knowing that's okay. 
and if this and that, that public program was the venue to have that conversation to at least spark the conversation, I consider it a, a success. That's great. So, with a lot of these public programs, all of our conventions have public programs. All of other D9 Greeks have public programs, and and the public program gives them an opportunity to, to greet us and, mm -hmm. and come and attend. But what happens, it seems, is that with a lot of our public programs, they're not as public. You don't see enough of the general public. So it, it becomes a, a point where we're kind of preaching to the choir. Yes, we all need it, right? True. You know, we all go through, the, a lot of us, I can't say we all, but a lot of us as black men, we go through depression, whether we're college educated, professional, True. successful, True. what have you. How do we get this message out? Because I think it was, it was, really, it was a really powerful panel. Um, but, you know, it was, it, we, we drew more of our people. There were some people from the public, right. but we don't get enough. We don't get enough of the community to come. How, how can we make that more relevant for them going forward? And it's not just you. It's not anything right. to say about your convention or anybody else's convention. But I think this is what, you know, our public programs, we come in because this is a celebration Correct. of our organizations. We, we're supportive of one another. So we come, Correct. right? Other organizations, the, the Sigmas come, the Qs come, the Kappas come, the Iotas come, the Zetas, the, the Deltas, the AKAs. How do we get the actual public to really feel the, the, the people that need it, really, really, really need it and struggle with it, to come and be a part? So I think the, the biggest piece of that is communication. <clears throat> I think the community needs to know, you're right, we're, we're very good at supporting other Greeks, and Greeks are, are very good at supporting us. But when it comes to those outside of the Greek community, when they see things that are advertised, I think their, their automatic response is, this is only for other Greeks. Right. We have to do a better job at saying, we want everyone to come. And so the marketing probably, we need to do better planning so that the marketing goes out in the community, that it isn't only just circulated within the Greek community. And then we have to be more open and having the discussions with those that aren't Greek to say, invite them in. This is also for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, the convention is going on and there are things that you can't be a part of, but this is for you and we want to inv welcome you and invite you in. Right, right. So your overall, what is your overall, so what is your overall platform or theme for your administration? Investing in Alpha. Investing in Alpha. Investing in Alpha. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. So what does that what does that mean? What does that mean to you? What is it? Because that, that can mean a lot, right? So for, for me and for the team and for the administration that is supporting me while I'm regional vice president, my whole goal in running for this this position was to be able to make sure that Alpha existed so that there could be other young men that look like me that could benefit from the things that I've benefited from. And so everyone that's a part of team uh, the part of the team I want to make sure that we put back into Alpha so that others can be encouraged, so that others can learn and can grow, and so that they can then feed out. Because literally, my whole goal was Alpha has been really good to me. I've, I, I, you know, I have two older brothers, two older sisters, but there was something missing in my life that I didn't know was missing mm -hmm. until I got into this brotherhood. And I wanted all of my team, to, whatever their role was, to do the best in that role so that they could put that back into the fraternity so the fraternity one could survive not just survive but so that the fraternity could flourish and then be able to reach more young men so what, what are some of the, those key initiatives that i mean we talk about reaching out to the community and, and interacting with the community providing our service and advocacy so what are some of the key initiatives of your administration that, that, that kind of target the community so what i'm very proud of is it's, it used to be formerly known as Be The Match. It's now the National uh, Marrow Donor Program. So that was a new program that was started in our Louisiana district. We took it on in the southwestern region. And so we've now been able to add thousands of new uh, registrants to the bone marrow registry, uh, wow. registry. So again, the biggest issue was when, when someone like us went to the hospital, we needed bone marrow, they didn't have, uh, there weren't enough registrants that had the DNA match or similar to those of us in the minority groups. And we're helping to close that gap. So that's one of the, the key things that I'm very proud of. Again, of course, Brothers Keeper. Again, 
making sure that our brothers are taken care of, especially our senior brothers. Uh, when disasters come, that's very close to my heart. Of course, I live in Houston, have to deal with, with storms and the floods, right, so I right. see it firsthand. So I'm very happy that within our region, those are two of the big things that we push to serve our brothers and serve the community. Wow, wow. Um, so what's, what, what would you, I mean, so you've got a, a year left? A year and four months. A year and four months. So what does that year and four months look like for you? I mean, oh, there, it's, I'm going all out. Some things that you're like? There's still things I want to do. That I, I plan on doing the best I can for this region until they swear the next regional vice president in. So I told the team, my foot's not off, you know, our foot's on the gas, no break. All gas, no break. We want to make sure that we serve the, our, our chapters uh -huh. so that they can continue to flourish. We want to make sure we uh, support our college brothers. One is that so that they can, first, their first priority is being a student. So we want them to be successful students. From there, we want to be able to make sure that they graduate and they can find viable and successful employment. For our alumni chapters, we want to give them all the support that they need so that whatever it looks like and how they need to serve their community, they have the resources that they need. Uh, the brothers have been trained properly uh, and they feel supported from the region to deal with those individual needs. So, no, you know, we're, we're not letting up. That's great. Not so, at all. So, so you, you mentioned Be The Match, and so that's a, a, a partnership. Correct. Uh, do, do we have any other partnerships in the southwestern region that, that we're working on? Or, yes, or we do. So we have March of Dimes is another one that we're very proud of. And so $122,000 uh, Brothers in the Southwestern Region raised for March of Dimes. We're wow. raising that to $130,000 uh, next year. Uh, and so um, I'm drawing a blank. But those are the two of my, my right. most. Right, and, 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 and I know the, the, that other sorority, we're not going <laughs> to mention them, that talk about beating us all the time. Right, but, right. But we're, we're coming back. We're coming the, back. And we're our goal back. is, is to, to close that gap and eventually beat them. So, so is there, is there a, 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 a big idea that you may not have time to do, but you're going to pass on to a predecessor? Um, what are you going to try to do that, that's still there? You know, you said you got this year left. So right. is, there this, is there this big project, this big idea that you want to get to? So something we've kind of done, but I hadn't reached our goal yet, is our HBCU initiative. And so this is our third year having an HBCU college fair. Uh, we've gotten up to $1.5 million in scholarships donated wow. to students that visit our fair. Before I leave this office, I'd like to get that to 2.5. I thought I was going to say $2 million, uh, because I'm a deuce. I'm, right, I'm number okay. two on my line. I saw that $2 million was a good number. But the fact that we're at $1.5 already, I think before I leave, I, my goal was to get $2.5 million scholarships for high school students to go to HBCUs. Wow. wow. So how many HBCUs are in this? Uh, are there HBCUs down here in, in, in the southwestern region? How many exist? There are. I don't know that number exactly. But I can tell you we had 12 HBCUs here. Uh, for our first year of our convention. So okay. over 600 students, 12 HBCUs. I think last year we had probably almost 20 HBCUs. We reached out to a few HBCUs outside of our region. Uh, but of course in Louisiana, Texas, um, I'd, I'd say probably about 10, eight, nine to 10 okay. total HBCUs in the Southwest region. But that, that's a guess. Okay. okay. That's a guess. And I, I mention HBCUs always because I went to the first. <laughs> The first degree granting HBCU, Lincoln University. So I'm always going to say that. We're not going to mention any other school that had a, another date and was was not a university. So just trying to remind everybody that. I got that, you. Right? I got you. Trying to remind you. everybody of that. Um, so what has been your so what's been your biggest let's say your biggest challenge as a regional vice president? I don't have enough time. <clears throat> There's so much I want to do. Uh, if I could clone myself, uh, there are chapters that reach out that need assistance, and I have to look at my calendar and say someone's already booked that weekend. I'm here. If I could clone myself and be in several places at one time, I would do it. If I didn't have to work and I could do this full time and serve the brotherhood in that way, I would do it. So my biggest challenge is I, I, I don't have enough time. Wow. Wow. So is there, you know, what's next for you after this? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't given it much thought. Who knows? Uh, I, I love this fraternity. I will always work for this fraternity in some way, uh, some, uh, some capacity. So we'll see what that is. But right now, until the next regional vice president is sworn in, my goal is to be the best Southwestern regional vice president possible. Okay. So w w what's your advice to any college brothers that are out there 
come young men in, mm -hmm. they're in a fraternity uh, and are looking at you and they want to be the next Jermaine O'Neville. Find, you don't have to do everything. Find the one or two things that you like, do them well. Brothers will recognize it. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Brother Nevely. Again, Thank you. This is Sphinx Talk with Brother Eric Christopher Webb. We're out. Sphinx Talk with Brother Eric Christopher Webb is sponsored by Good Health Wings. For more content, subscribe now. Thank you.